everyone my name is Halsey welcome to another Sunday school lesson where we give an overview of the lessons based on the precepts for living commentary don't forget to give a thumbs up to share to subscribe or even to leave a comment remember the more you give a thumbs up the more you are letting YouTube know how much you are liking these videos and they will share them even the more. I thank you in advance for giving a thumbs up. So we're in unit one of our winter quarter and the theme for this quarter is Jesus is Lord. All the lessons in December will be focusing on victory in Jesus. Bible scripture for today, Sunday, December the 25th, will be taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through verses 55. Lesson title is according to the promise before we start our lesson let's have prayer our father and our god we say thank you thank you lord for blessing us thank you lord for your love thank you for your mercy your kindness thank you lord for all the many blessings that you have bestowed up on us while we were yet in sin you, O oh Lord, you rescued us. We say thank you. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to save us and to reveal to us who you are. Help us, Lord. Help us to create a song in our hearts like Mary did and to magnify you with our souls and to rejoice in our spirit. For you, O oh Lord, you and you alone is worthy of all honor, glory, and praise. And we say thank you. We ask that you will bless every person, bless every listening ear, cause hearts to receive. Bless every teacher. Give understanding. Give strength. Give boldness. We thank you in advance, Lord, for what you already done, what you're doing now, and what you will continue to do in us, through us, and for us. Do it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this lesson will be outlined and it will be divided into three sections. Section one will deals with God's personal blessing on Mary. And that's Luke 1, 46 through 49. Section 2 will deal with God's blessings on his people. And that's verses 50 through verses 53. Section 3 will deal with God's faithfulness in sending the Messiah. And that's verses 54 through verses 55. So. Our lesson today is titled, According to the Promise. Also, the aim for change is that we review Mary's song of praising God's faithfulness, that we appreciate the faithfulness of God's people from generation to generation, and that we examine areas in our lives where our faithfulness to God can be strengthened. Today's lesson again, the focus is on Mary's song. And in this song, as we go into this lesson, in this song, we'll see how Mary praised God for his mercy, praise God who had chosen her to be the mother of his only son, Jesus Christ. So leading up to verse 46, if we remember back in verse 43, uh, that Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, 
And upon that visit, in verse 40, around verse 43, it says, What an honor this is that the mother of my Lord should visit me. 44, when you came in and greeted me, my baby jumped for joy. The instant I heard your voice, you are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. And so in response to that, what Elizabeth said to Mary, she then she then burst into praise, praising God in the form of a song. And this song is often called the Magnificat. Here this song lets us see how Mary magnified the Lord in song for what he was going to do for the world through her. We will now go to section one and it will deal with God's personal blessing on Mary. That's Luke chapter one, starting at verse 46, reading from King James Version. Verse 46, and Mary said, my soul do it magnify the Lord. And here we see how Mary has chosen. She has chosen to rejoice despite her circumstances. Despite that she was a young girl, we see here how Mary had chosen to praise the Lord. It shows a lot of bravery and faithfulness that a young girl would be willing to serve the Lord, knowing her circumstances, knowing how the people around her would look at her because of her circumstances, her pre being pregnant, knowing the situation, she still made a choice to praise the Lord with her soul. So we're, well, let's talk about the soul for a minute because uh, verse 47 says, and my spirit had rejoiced in God, my savior. So let's talk about the place of soul for a minute. So our soul involves our mind, our emotions, our feelings, our thoughts, our wills. So, so we see here, Mary uses her soul to glorify the Lord. And then she used her spirit to rejoice. Our spirit man is what connects us to the Lord. So Mary's song rejoicing in her spirit she enjoy and experience god in her spirit remember what jesus said god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so we worship the lord in our spirit so while our our soul is the source of our humanity it is very much limited and therefore the only way that we can experience god is through our spirit which is the core of our being let's take a look at first corinthians chapter 2 starting at verse 9 it says that is what scripture means when they say no eye has seen no ear has heard and no mind has imagined what god has prepared for those who love him but we know these things because 
God has revealed them to us by his spirit. And his spirit searches out everything and shows us even God's deep secrets. You know, like Mary, we too must do our part. God is merciful and God has, he has promised us great blessings. But many of these blessings, they require our active participation. He will set us free from our fears. He will guard us and rescues us. He will show us goodness. He will supply our every needs. He will listen to us when we call him. But we too must open up our mouth and do our parts. Like Mary did, give him praise. He deserves all the praise, all the glory, all the honor because he is our merciful, loving God. Verse 48. For he had regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. And here we see how Mary acknowledged that it was all about God's grace. It was all about God's doing. She knew she was blessed because God had mercy upon her. And that gave her the reason to be grateful and to be thankful that God had chosen a lowly person, what society would call a little nobody. But God, who sits very high, looked down on a lowly person like Mary and gave her favor. And when we and Mary here, she referred to herself as a handmaid, which was a common name in her time for a female slave in, in those days. And that was like the lowest position a one could have. In their custom, that was a very low position. But God, you know, this is when we say, but God, what God has for me, it's for me. What he has for you, it's for you. But God, but God had looked upon Mary with favor and had given her a place in honor. Did you hear that? And the second half says, for behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. In other words, future generations would call Mary blessed, not because of who she was, but because of what the Lord was doing through her, she would give birth to the Savior. Mary was a sinner just like everybody else, but God used her, giving her favor and used her to be the mother of the Savior, the Lord Jesus. Verse 49, for he that is mighty had done to me great things, and holy is his name. And here again, we see how Mary continues to acknowledge that the Lord is the one who blessed her. She did not take credit for it, nor was she prideful about it. She knew that she did not have anything to do with it. It was God and God alone. So just like Mary, throughout the scriptures, the people of God would proclaim his mighty power as they worship him. Again, we see how Mary called the Lord mighty and holy. And yet, Yet, the Lord was able to look down upon Mary and have regards for her. 
Mary who was in a lower class would be looked upon as a low class citizen. God who is mighty, the omnipotent one, the all powerful one, the omniscient one, the all knowing one, the omnipresent one, the one who is everywhere all the time, looked down upon little Mary and gave her favor. When we think about where Mary came from, she came from Nazareth. That was one of, in, in her days, that was one of the most insignificant and despised village in Galilee. Even Jesus was looked down upon. Remember in John chapter 1 and verse, start at verse 45, it says, Philip went off to look for Nathanael and told him, We have found the very person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth, exclaimed Nathanael, can anything good come out from there? Just come on and see for yourself, Philip said. So here in Mary's case, in spite of these disadvantage, God still chose her and exalted her and given her honor. And so throughout these verses, we have seen how Mary praised God about his blessings upon her. We will now go to section two, and it will deal with God's blessings on his people, and that's verses 50 through verses 53. And we will now see how Mary praised God for what he has done for his people. Verse 50, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. And here we see how Mary declares that God's mercy is up on them that fear him. And it is from generation to generation. The word fear here in this case is a part of worshiping the Lord. If we take a look at Psalm 103 and verse 16, the wind blows and we are gone as though we have never even been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant, of those who obey his commandments. And so here we see the psalmist David here, his praise was Focus on God's glorious deeds. We have so much, just like Mary and even David here, we have so much to thank and praise the Lord for. Fear him, meaning reverence him, obey him, respect him. If we also look in the book of Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10, it says the Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. When we understand that when we fear the Lord, we are coming to him in humility. We are coming to him in obedience. We're not being afraid of him. No, we're fearing him as in obeying him and reverencing him and respecting him and when we when we when we live in this manner we are acknowledging his work and his blessings like mary here is proclaiming about his mighty work verse 51 he had show strength with his arm he had scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. 52. He had put down the mighty from their seats 
and exalt them of low degree. He had filled the hungry with good things and the rich he had sent empty away. Here we continue to see how Mary uh, continues to proclaim God's attributes. He refers to the strength of his arm. And that phrase were commonly used as a metaphor for strength. Mary was very versed in the word. She knew that God had already proven his power over many enemies. If we take a look uh, at Psalm 89 and verse 13. Uh, Psalm 89 and verse 13. It says, powerful is your arm. Strong is your hand. Your right hand is lifted high in glorious strength. And so, as it is written, God had already proven his strength. And so, with the coming of the Messiah, he, he will uh, begin to complete that victory. When Christ uh, came, he would complete what God had started. Um, if we go to Isaiah chapter 9 and start it at verse 6, the prophet Isaiah prophesied this about the coming of Christ. He said, for unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Again, Mary was very versed in the word. She knew God could scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts, was able to correct injustice and to punish sin. The mighty would be put down from their seat. They would be deprived of their self-exaltation. They would be deprived of their self-exalted position. God would raise up those of low degree, those who are looked upon as low in lowly in society. God would exalt them. Here we see Mary praise God for his victory. And this includes his ability to raise up those who the world would reject and look down upon. Verse 53, he said, it says, He had filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he had sent empty away. And here, the hungry would describe those who realized their need for God and aspired for his spiritual food those who fear him, those who will obey him, who are willing to obey him, the hungry, the thirsty. Here it says, those will be fed. They will be filled up with good things. Whereas the rich, he will send away empty. Talking about the proud. The self-sufficient ones, the ones who do not see their need of a savior, they don't see their need of a God, they are self-sufficient. Here it says, those group will be sent away. Now, Jesus taught these same or similar principles in his sermon on the mount if we take a look at matthew chapter 5 and start reading at verse 3 it says god blesses those who realize their need for him 
for the kingdom of heaven is given to them. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are gentle and lowly, for the whole earth will belong to them. God blesses those who are hungry and thirsty for justice, for they will receive it in full. You know, Jesus here teaches principles that contradicts the world's view. We can see how Mary here, she pulls on these same principles that Jesus taught in uh, Matthew 5. Here, Mary, she trusted in the Lord, showing mercy to his people. Because Mary, again, was very versed. She knew that scripture details how God had uh, blessed his people in the past. So based on her knowledge, she had hope. She had hope that God would continue to do the same thing in the future, blessing his people. And we too, as believers in Jesus Christ, we too can take great hope in God's faithfulness to his people. He's the same God back then. He's the same God right now that we too are praying to or believing on to do great and mighty things for his people. Amen. Verse 54. He had helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. 55. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And here again, Mary continues to celebrate God's mercy to Israel just as he promised, prophecies about a promised one. Here we see Mary celebrates God's mercy to Israel just as he promised Abraham and his descendants God has kept his promise in keeping his word to Israel by sending the Messiah, the promised one who would come and save the whole world. God had promised Abraham that through his seed, all the earth would be blessed. And God had kept that promise by sending the Messiah. And that promise that God made to Abraham is still going on today. It is a living covenant that God had made with him. It's a covenant to all humanity that would be fulfilled in the man Christ Jesus. Abraham was given a promise that all the nation on this earth would be blessed through Christ Jesus. As we close, what can we learn from Mary's song of praise? For one, Mary rejoiced in the Lord despite the almost certain humiliation that would follow her pregnancy. She chose, Mary had chosen to magnify and rejoice in God, her Savior. Acknowledgement. Mary acknowledged that it was all of God's grace. She recognized that the great things that God had done for her was all because of God's mercy. And we too should recognize God's mercy daily. His mercy is brand new every day. For all of us to recognize. Proud. Mary declared the victory of God's power over the proud and the powerful. God is able to bring them down to nothing. And this should also be our declaration. When we pray, we should be thankful to God that He's able. To bring the proud down and humble them under his mighty hands. Reflection. 
Mary reflected back upon what God had done in the past in rescuing his people and that his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation, those who obey him, those who respect him, those who love him, God's mercy will always be up on them. Faithfulness. Mary praised God for his faithfulness. God had made an unconditional promise to Abraham that he was sure to fulfill through the coming of the Messiah and he did not forget it. He brought it to pass. Submission. Mary responded to God in a total submission. And so as we approach this week, this week, this Christmas season, we too, like Mary, can choose. We can choose to magnify the Lord and rejoice in our spirit for what God has done, for who he is and what he's doing and what he did for sending his only begotten son save us from the punishment of sin may we remember to praise him to lean on his grace to declare his victory to declare his truth and to rejoice in his return jesus will one day return to establish his final kingdom May we, like Mary, praise the Lord and rejoice in him for who he is and for what he has done for us. And this will conclude this lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, please give a thumbs up, give a share, subscribe, or even leave a comment. But most importantly, remember, we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you. Until next time, bye-bye.